This week we're cruising to the Great Lakes State to take on the blistering speeds of Michigan International Speedway. Manufacturers will compete for bragging rights while drivers compete for a playoff spot. Meanwhile, the ARCA drivers make the trek from Michigan to Illinois for a doubleheader weekend. Will Ford continue their nine race win streak in the Motor City? Or will another manufacturer make it to Victory Lane? We'll make sure you don't miss anything and it all starts here on Around the Track. Welcome to Around the Track presented by Moultrie Mobile. I'm Kim Kuhn alongside Ryan Flores and it was a crazy weekend in Richmond. The action track is back for sure. We saw a crazy finish but Let's start with trucks. Yeah. We locked the playoff field in. That was a crazy race for Ty Majeski. It was the eventual winner. He had a pit road penalty, lost track position, was able to come back. But I was impressed with the guy we talked about last week, Grant Infinger. He got the around the track bump. Yeah. And I think we maybe gave him a, a little bit of that magic sauce headed into that race. But shout out to Daniel Dye. He came into the season, the regular season finale in a deficit behind the cut line by five points, was able to put together a solid race, earned 13 stage points, which that was a big deal to earn himself ultimately a spot in the playoffs. The first driver ever in this format to jump the line in the regular season finale. Absolutely. Daniel Dye has had a great year, and I'm excited to see what he's able to do in the playoffs. He's definitely a dark horse. Another guy that had a great debut was Connor Hall. It was mm -hmm. good to see him drive yeah. up into the top ten. And, hey, we're doing shout-outs. Shout-outs to Goodyear. That was a, that was a great – like. Finish aside, mm -hmm. whatever happened there, it was a great race. The teams had options. There was comers, there was goers. Mm -hmm. Dan, we saw Daniel Suarez drive yeah. through the field. It made it very interesting, not only as a fan, but as a competitor as well. So kudos to Goodyear on a great race in Richmond. And we saw the points gap narrow both at the cut line and then at the top of the board, the regular season points battle is on six points between, you look at Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, and Tyler Reddick for that regular season championship. Yeah, and 15 playoff points forever can win that. So, you know those guys, that that battle will get hot and heavy. And, look, if you win that, it, it's – it's not an automatic berth into the round of four, but it's definitely a good buffer. So three races left to lock yourself into the playoffs if you're in the Cup Series and to figure out who that regular season champ is going to be. And it all starts this weekend at Michigan. Yeah, it's going to be a great race in Michigan. This is one that I think could be a wild card as well, but we'll wait and see. We'll have a ton on Michigan, but like every other week, there's a lot of racing going on everywhere else. So t let's take a dive into what else is going on around the country. The racing action gets started Wednesday at Thompson Speedway. You know, I'm a modified guy. Yeah. I love this race here in August, so we'll see who wins. I'll be glued to my Flow Racing app for the Modified Tour at Thompson Wednesday, 8 o'clock. Canada Series at Delaware Speedway. Then we got ARCA Doubleheader. Yeah. These guys got their work cut out for them with Michigan. And then the Springfield Mile and Dirt Race on Sunday at 2 p.m. What are you looking forward to for our ARCA guys at Michigan first? Well, first of all, that's a lot of racing in a short amount of time. Less than 48 hours after they finish the race in Michigan, they're going to be running the Springfield Mile Dirt Track, a great track. We'll talk about that in a second. But as we look at the Michigan race, the last three winners there in the ARCA Menard Series went on to win the championship. Ty Gibbs, Nick Sanchez, Jesse Love. So is this a precursor to seeing who's going to be holding the title hardware at the end of the season? Absolutely. You, gotta, you have to have a ton of speed to win this race your driver has to be on and can't put himself in bad positions so that's why this is usually a precursor to your champion because like you said you got to mm -hmm. have all of it but hey another guy that has all of it is Connor Zilich he's gonna be back in the field this week along with Tanner Gray but let's touch on Zilich real quick mm -hmm. I don't remember this much hype around anybody coming up in, in a long time yeah. he's Definitely the most hyped up guy, but for just cause. He's won a lot of races, and he just signed with JRM. Yeah, he did. We already knew that he was going to be running part-time for JRM later in the season. I think it's a four-race stint with them, but full-time starting in 2025. So we'll get to see a little action on the Xfinity side from him before the end of the season. But I'm excited for this weekend and him because his birthday – was last month, turned 18. I think we maybe wished him happy birthday on an earlier show, but that means the world is his oyster in terms of the types of tracks he can race. So this is the first time we're going to ever see him on a track longer than a mile. He's got a lot going on for an 18-year-old, yeah. that's for sure. But these ARCA teams have a lot going on, going to Springfield. You've been to Springfield I have, before, yes. I haven't, so tell me about it. Oh, it's really cool. You know, it's in the fairgrounds. There's so much hype around it. The fans there are amazing. It's a dirt track, um, so, so bring your scarves and bandanas. But I've actually only covered flat track racing there so I'm excited to see what the Arca Menard series is able to do that weekend or this weekend and then you think about it that Springfield race kicks off the performance seed dirt double so we'll yes. see them go to DeCoin in a couple of weeks and it's all for a big paycheck yeah so yeah like you said DeCoin's and other fairgrounds the racetracks are very similar in two different places we know a lot of these old fairgrounds Syracuse mm -hmm. used to have one they had a big super dirt week there 
but it's cool that the ARCA guys still go there and it's cool that they're going to be racing for a $20,000 cash prize if someone can sweep it. If they can't sweep it, it'll be split up between the top three in, we'll call it a point system mm -hmm. for those two races. So I'm excited, man. This is a race that I'm always glued to. I love seeing it. I love seeing the interlopers come over from USAC mm -hmm. and there's different dirt guys that run it. The cars are different and it's always fun to watch. Well, it's going to be an action packed weekend and it all starts at Michigan. Let's take a look back at all three series at Michigan in 2023. NASCAR's once a year trip to the Motor City comes at a critical point in the season. This is the moment. Will it take a must win to get into the playoffs? We're racing in Michigan. These cars are pretty much an edge right now. Going through the corner at 180 miles an hour, so I'd say so. They're pretty fast. Oh, oh they get together. Mm. Big crash. Multi car incident. Josh Berry summing with Rexon. Gonna do it again. Jesse Love wins it. Neiman Check is long gone. Make it five. He's gonna win in Michigan. Thank you for all that you do. And caution has come out. The rain is going to win out here. We will have to do it on Monday. Green flag is back in the air. Bubba Walla, strong move. Here's Truex again. That 19 car is just faster. Trouble back straight away. Bowman is around. And then he can't get the car going. Busher, and he goes back to back. He'll win in Michigan. Hell yeah. Oh, my God. I can't believe that. As we look at the schedule of events this weekend, it all starts with ARCA, as we said, Friday, 6 p.m. Xfinity, they are back after yeah. a three-week hiatus, Saturday, 3.30. It all leads us to the cup race Sunday, 2.30 p.m. But let's talk about Xfinity. Those slackers have been off. I know. What are you looking forward to coming back? Well, I hope they enjoyed their break, but now it's time to knock the rust off. And there are six races left until they lock in their playoffs and the playoffs begin. But the points battle around the cut line, it has gotten close. Right now we've got Ryan Sieg in by just three. On the outside looking in, Sammy Smith. And that's one of two JRM cars that currently does not have a playoff position. Yeah, when they, you know, when anybody at Junior Motorsports starts the season, it is not to make the playoff. It's to win the championship. So that, you know, they are getting it. Things are getting tight yeah. over there. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Ryan C has that technical alliance mm -hmm. with Haas. The Haas cars were super fast yeah. at Indy. I see this being a lot like Indy was. So I don't know, man. Those JRM cars have some work to do. Yeah, and in one of those JRM cars, Carson Quapel will be in the 88. Excited to see him continue what has been a strong kind of debut year in the Xfinity Series. I know it's not full-time, but in the part-time effort he's had, he's been so good. No, Gregson will be in the mix. John Hunter Nemechek playing double duty this weekend. We saw in the recap he won last year. So he might be able to steal a win from the Xfinity Series regulars before he runs the cup race on Sunday. Yeah, every time John Hunter gets in that 20 car, he is lethal. But speaking of cup, let's take a look at the cup action. It all starts with practice this week. P&Q at 1230 on Saturday. Leads us to the cup race, like we said, Sunday at 230. What are you looking forward to most in the cup race at Michigan? Well, the stakes are just so high when we come to Michigan because you are in the backyard of all the manufacturer. Everybody wants to win this race because they've got so many guests at the track. There's a sense of pride in winning at Michigan, and it takes just about everything. You have to put together almost a perfect race to win, and that Heritage Trophy is kind of awaiting those teams, and so it, it's bragging rights. Yeah, speaking of being in the backyard, you know, I know three drivers in the Cup Series, uh, Eric Jones, uh, Carson Hostbar, he was on Stack mm -hmm. and Pennies this week talking about how much it meant to go back and yeah. race in Michigan. He, they both ran the Battle of Berlin last week, and then a guy that I worked for, and we were very close to winning there, Brad Keselowski. I know how much this means to him. He is dying to get his first win there. Another guy is dying to get their first win at Michigan Speedway and looking for a little bit of redemption mm -hmm. in the ARCA race is Andreas Perez. Andres Perez picks up his second career pole. He will lead the field to green. Green flag is in the air. We're racing at Charlotte Motor Speedway. The guy I have my eye on, the guy that may be the next Jesse Love, might be Andres Perez. That's the best we've seen anybody all night long in that top lane, and Perez is trying to make it work as they touch. Up the track for Sawalic. Perez catches the car and is the first new leader on the night. Andres Perez to the point. Look at some of Andreas' stats from this season. He's the current Arkham Nard Series points leader. He has yet to reach victory lane, but he is the model of consistency. He's only he's finished everything but one lap this year so far. He's got speed. Yeah. He's got consistency. What does he need to get the victory lane this weekend? Oh goodness, more of what we saw last year from what he did at Michigan. He was so close. This is kind of a redemption race for him, I think. So I think it's going to feel really good if he's able to win that one. And then we talked about it being a doubleheader. As he heads to Springfield, if he wins that race, it'll be the first time an international driver has won at Springfield. But a busy year from him. Double duty, running full-time in the Arkham Menards. 
Series and NASCAR Mexico Series, kind of following in the footsteps of Daniel Suarez, who did the same thing for those same exact teams in 2013 and 2014. Yeah, he also dipped his toes in the Truck Series, mm -hmm. and he, he was very fast there. Another guy that he's following the shoes of that has a Michigan ARCA win mm -hmm. in his in the Rev Racing car, his same car he's in now, is Nick Sanchez. He's been nothing short of impressive, and Andreas is on the path to be just like him. So I'm excited to see what he's able to do with his young career. Yeah, and as we talk Michigan, here's what the drivers had to say about racing in the Irish Hills. Yeah, I think the tough thing about Michigan is just the speed. You know, it's probably the fastest feeling track we go to. You're just on edge kind of the whole time. Um, you know, it's a two-mile racetrack that we're running 30-something seconds around. So it's uh, it's just a super, super fast racetrack. It's uh, just a tricky place. It's uh, it's gotten slicker and slicker as we go every every year, and then it's just rougher and rougher down the straightaway. So it'll uh, it'll be a challenge this year like it is every year. And the trick part of it is, uh, is really just how I – aero-sensitive it is. Um, as much as everyone hates to hear those words, it's just one of those places the speed just uh, really compounds on, on top of what we fight and um, you know you gotta, you gotta search for that clean air. With that being said, you gotta be smart, you gotta be up front. If you can do that, you can control your own mistakes and that'll keep you out of trouble. It's a challenging race, it's challenging to pass. I think that's you know the main thing to me that you know really you see guys just sending it in there to try and complete a pass because you don't know if you're going to get that opportunity again in five laps or never, right, until you get to the next pit cycle. So I think that's what makes some of those races really good is that it's, it is hard to pass, makes pit stops important. If you get a chance to pass, you, know, you really have to complete the pass right then. So I think that's why you see a lot of guys kind of you know, risk it and sometimes make mistakes. But um, at the same time, from you know, the fan side, it, it seems like it's definitely a little bit chaotic and, and pretty fun to watch. So there's some driver insight, and no coincidence, all of those drivers drive for Ford. They've won the last nine races there. How can they be unseated? What do teams need to do right when it comes to Michigan? Well, last year we just saw it needed to be pit, pit road execution. Tyler Reddick had this race pretty mm -hmm. much won. They had, a, they had a loose wheel. They've made their pit crew better this year. They've been on a mm -hmm. heater lately. We'll talk about him more later. And then the 19 car, they just got out strategied by the 17. So when I think of, I'm going to go out on a limb here okay. with the playoff picture getting really tight, I think guy, a guy that could be a spoiler when we talk about Fords and strategy is Todd Gillen, the guy we just oh, heard from. Okay. He's at 38, has been fast, and Ryan Bergenti is not afraid to make some crazy pick calls. So I'm excited to see what they're able to do. Well, Michigan is a big track. It's a wide track, and it has lane options. And the guy that was winning at Michigan before the Ford dominance that we've seen the last nine years is Kyle Larson. And I think we should expect big things at any track where you have lane options. He's going to be very strong. Absolutely. He's like a two-mile savant, but he's never won there in the next gen era. And mm -hmm. like we talked about, the, the two things we just talked about were Ford and Toyota there. The Chevys haven't been great, but you never pull on Superman's cape. We saw Chevy win last week. We'll see what he's able to do this weekend. I, I've said it when I looked at this round, what, like getting to the mm -hmm. playoffs, I think Michigan can be just a roll of the dice. Yeah, I think like it's, even a wild card race yes, almost? And, and there's also, it's also a place where weather rolls in. We've seen sure. a lot of rain shortened race here, so... I think it's just going to get crazier as we get closer to the playoffs. Yeah, and as we get closer, the points battle has gotten very hot around kind of that cutoff line. You have Ty Gibbs, Bubba Wallace, Chris Buescher, and Ross Chastain all fighting for a playoff spot. It's going to be a big weekend for those teams. And then on the flip side, if you have a playoff spot, some of the stuff that you can learn this weekend can translate to the Kansas race in the playoffs. Absolutely. and But what also is going to translate to this race is Pocono. That's why I'm excited about the 12 teams chances because it's going to be about overall speed in your car, execution from your gas man, and execution from your crew chief, and your driver is going to have to put it on the line. We saw guys putting themselves in mm -hmm. bad aero spots in that clip, spinning out underneath other drivers. So you're going to have to be on the ragged edge mm -hmm. of the tire. Time your The passes are not going to be easy, even though this track's wide. You see you, we saw the 8 get underneath the 12, mm -hmm. get a little too close to his door and turn around backwards. So it seems straightforward, but it's going to be anything but come Sunday. Yeah, and not a lot of tire wear. You mentioned tires, so opens strategy opportunity up. I do think we're going to see some fuel mileage come into play, but we've told you what to watch for. Now Erica is going to tell you where to put your money. Up next, we've got Easy Money with E. I'm Steve Latart. Join myself and Todd Gordon each week on NASCAR Inside the Race, presented by Consumer Cellular. We will break down exactly how the race was won, plus we'll dive into the data and go in depth on penalties, race strategies, point standings, and rules changes. And we have all kinds of fun tools to show off to provide all the minute details. Catch NASCAR Inside the Race each Tuesday on NASCAR's YouTube channel. 
Let's now welcome in our resident sports betting analyst, Erica, to get the best bets of the weekend. But before we dive into Michigan, we got to kind of recap our bets for Richmond. It was a wild race between the tire option and the insane finish. So how did our bets shake out? It was crazy, Kim. We had <laughs> one best bet to hit, and that was Bubba Wallace as a top five finisher. Now, we got in on that at plus 350. I did see that line move to as high as plus 360, so congrats to you if you waited it out and got the better number. But I have to be fully transparent. I was very upset that Denny Hamlin did not end up winning because if you followed my bonus bets toward the end of the week, you know that he was one of the drivers I was backing to be an outright winner. But I'm just going to sit here and be grateful that Bubba Wallace put some cash in my pocket as a top five finisher. That's right. One bet cashed in is better than no bets cashed in. All right, exactly. let's get right into Michigan and look at the top five finishers for this weekend and who you're putting your money on. We got three top five finishers that I'm looking at. Bubba Wallace, we have Denny Hamlin, and we also have Chris Buescher. So first we're going to go Bubba Wallace back to him two weeks in a row, plus 310. I like him in this spot. Bubba runs really well at Michigan. And I also said last week, and I'm going to say it again, he has to keep being aggressive. Yes, he got into that 16th playoff spot for now. But as we know, without an outright win, he still has his work cut out for him. Um, and Bubba Wallace also finished as a runner up in 2022 here at this track. So I feel pretty confident that he can come out and run very well again and finish as a top five at plus 310. I love that pick. And last year headed into Michigan weekend, the whole garage was saying the number 23 was one of the ones to beat. So we'll see if he has similar success this weekend and a fast race car. You mentioned Denny Hamlin. He's a guy that you like to sprinkle money on whenever you can. Why Michigan for Denny, though? Well, Michigan, I like his minus 125 odds. I would actually like plus 110 a little bit better in this spot. So you early birds who saw the odds when they first dropped on Tuesday probably got in on Denny Hamlin at plus 110, but minus 125 is not bad. Denny finished this race third last year, and then he's coming off that second place finish at Richmond. But I do want to take a step back while we're talking about Richmond, Kim. If you followed Denny's money last week at one book, he was the highest ticket, he had the highest handle, and he was one of the drivers that was the highest liability. So if you are a better who likes to fade the public, make sure you keep an eye out on how the money's coming on Denny because that might inform you on what you want to do with him this week. All right, you've mentioned two Toyota drivers, but we know it has been a Ford dominant track the last handful of years. Chris Buescher winning last year. So it looks like you're backing him for a top five finish. You are confident about this. Okay. This might be a loaded question, but let me just give you my, my short answer. I'm confident he's going to finish in the top 10. I prefer his top 10 odds at minus 160, but the better value is Chris Buescher plus 220 as a top five finisher. As we know, you know, he finished this race first last year. And I did mention a few weeks ago on Around the Track right here on this set, I said this was the time of the year last year where Chris Buescher and his team started getting hot, getting win after win after win. If they can open that playbook and recreate that magic, we could see him at least finish in the top 10 hopefully top five this week at Michigan. And I do want to say, Kim, yeah, he's coming off an 18th place finish last week at Richmond, but let's just consider that to be a, a precursor, a warm up mm -hmm. to him going back to the track where he's the reigning winner. Okay. All right. So we have your top five odds picks. What about just winning team? Winning team was a little bit difficult for me, but we are going to go Hendrick at plus 280 to be the winning team. As you know, Larson won the last three races at Michigan that were won by a Chevy driver. If you don't want to throw $10 or $20 here, you can even sprinkle $5 here, and that would still win you a total of $19. So don't bet the farm on Hendrick at plus 280, but do consider putting that on your betting slip for this week at Michigan. I know that Team Hendrick and Chevy especially would be happy to see uh, Kyle Larson or any of the Hendrick drivers kind of shake up the four dominance we've seen recently at Michigan. Erica, thank you so much for the insight. We'll check in with you next week before the wild card that Daytona will certainly be. And don't forget, you can check Erica's social media for bonus bets later in the week. And now that we've told you where to put your money, if you're a fan headed to Michigan, we're going to tell you all the cool things that are happening for you in the Irish Hills. Hey race fans, Corey the Joy here. Join Ryan Flores and myself for Stacking Pennies each week. I'll break down my race and explain what happened right out of my windshield. 
Plus, we award the Dogs of the Week for the best pit crews and go in-depth on all the money stops, pit road mistakes, and penalties. And we've got a ton of gifts. We have SVG stopping by. We had Ricky Stenhouse after he punched Kyle Busch in the face. We've had Bubba. We've had all sorts of guys in here in the Nonsense Garage, so you do not want to miss it. Check us out on Sirius XM Channel 90, YouTube, or wherever you find your podcasts. Each and every week, Stack of Pennies. That's what's up. A ton to look forward to if you're a race fan at Michigan International Speedway this weekend. It all kicks off on Thursday. That's the day I would want to be there. Bingo and dueling pianos. The dueling piano is going to be infield at the concert stage, 7 p.m. I went and played bingo on our break, and it was electric. <laughs> it's so I, fun, Now right? I know why people play that so much. But another thing that's electric is this infield at Michigan. People have been camping since Monday. Mm -hmm. This is a full week event. You go there, it's Talladega-esque. And yeah. especially since we've gone the one race, it has made this place just a giant party, and my man Tim Duggar is back Woo! in concert this weekend. Yeah, last year the campgrounds were packed, and that was even knowing that there was going to be weather in the area, so I cannot wait to see how energetic the campgrounds are this year. Yeah, this is a, a party and then a race breaks out, yeah. but you can see everything that Michigan <laughs> has to offer at mispeedway.com. That being said, let's go to fantasy. All right, our race picks for this weekend. I'm going to start with you. Okay. I'm going, I talked about him earlier, I'm going Tyler Reddick. Oh, he, okay. Like I said, he had this race dominated last year. We, when I think about two-mile racetracks where you're hanging out, it's overall speed, I think of two guys, mm -hmm. Kyle Larson mm -hmm. and Tyler Reddick. Those two, they grew up racing together. They have the same style. This fits his style, and it fits 2311 style. We see, have, we see them have success with that 45 car at Kansas. It's a lot alike. Without a pit road issue last year, they win this race. He's finished oh. no worse than sixth in like the last 57 races yeah, we've run this yeah. year. I have no They're idea. On a hot streak. His stats are amazing so far. With this crazy run he's been on, he is close to winning that regular season championship. Mm -hmm. I think he punched his way to victory lane this weekend. I'm looking forward to see what Tyler Reddick does. What about you? All right. You're going to like my pick, and it's not to make up for last week's black flag. I am picking the 12 team, and that's because of the record that Blaney has at Michigan. Former winner there, and then you look at the last – I think nine races there. He's finished seven of those nine in the top 10. That I feel like is very strong. And then Ford's dominance, we've mentioned it. They've won the last nine races. I think it's going to be 10 races in a row for Ford and it's going to be Blaney and Victory Lane. Well, I'm excited to get the Michigan International Speedway. This is a place that I've never won at when Blaney won here. I was with Brad. Oh, that's right. We've been close. I've led a lot of laps with the teams that I've mm -hmm. been here with, but never punched my ticket to Victory Lane. But that leads us to our white flag. Oh. Another guy who's won here and he's led a lot of laps. Who holds the record for the most laps led at Michigan International Speedway? Hmm. I know who won the first race, Cale Yarbrough. I actually think he won the first two. Can I ask a clue? Let me just stop you there, because you're right. Oh, that, yes! Yeah, that was Cale Yarbrough. 1,308 laps led around Michigan International Speedway. Look at that. So, Cale was on fire when it comes to Michigan International Speedway. This weekend, the drivers will be competing in the Firekeepers Casino 400. We're going to have you locked and loaded, though, next week for the Daytona International Speedway race. In my place, though, because I'm headed across the pond, Jesse Punch is going to be filling in. Yep, so make sure that you join us right here, me and Jay Punch, next week as we take you around the track for everything Daytona.